St. Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, the communion with the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome to the celebration of this Mass. The televising of today's Mass is possible by a contribution from an anonymous donor from Vanier, Ontario. Canada today is much richer because of the gift of this Mass, and we thank you in Vanier, Ontario. As we prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist, as we come closer to Easter, and we feel already the tension of sin and the tension of grace, we ask the Lord to help us to find the truth in our lives, to reject evil, and to come closer to God. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ of mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Enlighten, O God, of compassion, the hearts of your children, sanctified by penance, and in your kindness grant those you, grant those you stir to a sense of devotion, a gracious hearing when they cry out to you. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. Nebuchadnezzar, in furious rage, commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought in. So they brought those men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods, and you do not worship the golden statue that I have set up. Now, if you are ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, drum, and entire musical ensemble to fall down and worship the statue that I have made, well and good. But if you do not worship, you shall immediately be thrown into a furnace of blazing fire, and who is the God that will deliver you out of my hands. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to present a defense to you in this matter. If our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire, and out of your hand, O king, let him deliver us. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods and we will not worship the golden statue that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was so filled with rage against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that his face was distorted. He ordered the furnace heated up seven times more than was customary and ordered some of the strongest guards in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to throw them into the furnace of blazing fire. The young men walked around in the midst of the flames, singing hymns to God and blessing the Lord. But the angel of the Lord came down into the furnace to be with Azariah and his companions and drove the fiery flame out of the furnace and made the inside of the furnace as though a moist wind were whistling through it. The fire did not touch them at all and caused them no pain or distress. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and rose up quickly. He said to his counselors, Was it not three men that we threw bound into the fire? They answered the king, True, O king. He replied, But I see four men, unbound, walking in the middle of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the fourth has the appearance of a god. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the door of the furnace of blazing fire and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out from the fire, 
and the satraps, the prefects, the governors, and the king's counselors gathered together and saw that the fire had not any power over the bodies of those men. The hair of their head was not singed, their tunics were not harmed, and not even the smell of fire came from them. Nebuchadnezzar said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him. They disobeyed the king's command and yielded up their bodies rather than serve and worship any god except their own god. The word of the Lord. and praise forever. The Lord be with you. And your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Jews who believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying, you will be made free? Jesus answered them, very truly I tell you, everyone who commits a sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you are free indeed. I know that you are descendants of Abraham, yet you look for an opportunity to kill me, because there is no place in you for my word. I declare what I have seen in the Father's presence. As for you, you should do what you have heard from the Father. They answered him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, if you were Abraham's children, you would be doing what Abraham did. 
but now you are trying to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. This is not what Abraham did. You are indeed doing what your father does. They said to him, we are not illegitimate children. We have one father, God himself. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I came from God and now I am here. I did not come on my own, but he sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. If you listen to my word, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. We live in a world which is full of fog, mist, mirrors, and lies. We have it all around us, and we are constantly need to check whether we are, what we are dealing with is with the truth or not. We often say politicians are liars. They make all sorts of promises, and we know they will not keep them. Actually, they are not bad sort of guys, but very often, in order to get votes, they will promise more than they have authority to do. They promise us impossible dreams. And at the time of elections, we want to hear them, even though we know they are not true. And so when we live in a world of lies, we constantly check things. And even when we check things, we find that we are often deceived, defrauded, and conned into doing something. And then we bang our heads against the wall and say, why do we believe in this? And Jesus makes promises. But the, prom but the good thing about Jesus is Jesus can keep the promises. He has the power. He tells us the truth. No, he not only tells us the truth, Jesus is the truth. And this truth sets us free. It is a liberating experience. We can breathe freely. We don't have something around our chest binding us. And because we know the truth, we can say yes to the call, that God has called us to be people that we are supposed to be. We can say yes to God because we know God keeps the promises. In our first reading, done by Mary, we have Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They're living also in a, in a whirlwind of lies. They're asked to adore a statue made of gold. Don't we do the same thing? We adore the almighty dollar and all the gold that we can see. And even though we know that all that glitters is not gold. They were called to adore this statue made by human hands, and they knew that it was a lie, it was a falsehood. And so they would say to Nebuchadnezzar, we will not obey you. Nebuchadnezzar said, if God can save you, and they replied, even if God does not save us. It is not that they don't believe in God, they're simply echoing what Nebuchadnezzar says. If God can save you, then and they said, if God does not save us, we will still not worship something made by human hands. They trusted in God, but whether they would be saved from the fire was both incidental and accidental. It really did not make a difference. In our world and days, we also live in a whole idea of lies and untruths. We live in a world in which we have to bribe in order to get our way, whether we are in business or we want to get something done. You know that famous phrase, wine them, dine them, and sign them. We live in a world like that. People expect us, if they want something from us, if we want something from them, that they go to expensive restaurants, they eat well, and only then they will give us something. In one way, it's a slow death. And the word in Spanish for, de for our bribe is mordida, which means a slow death. But there are other types of deaths as well, the other types of lies as well that we live in. So often we say yes, when our whole being wants to say no, whether it's in political life, in the civil life, and even in church life. 
We know that if we are in politics and we are in government circles, if I don't go according to what the mayor says or the prime minister says or the premier says, I will be very soon put on, on a shelf. And the premier and the mayor and all these people in authority have a certain philosophy. They have got a certain program they want to push. And even when we see that this does not work, we will say yes. Here in Toronto, we know all about this, the, the big debate about subways and LRTs. But we say yes because we don't want to be shoved off into the boondocks. Now, the bit difficult situation very often is that very often some things are good, but they don't hold value anymore. Like the scribes and the Pharisees said to Jesus, we are children of Abraham, and Jesus said, that's wonderful and that's good, but I'm calling you to something more, not just be children of Abraham, but to be children of God. If you listen to my words, it will set you free, and you can be what you're called to be. Say yes to being children of God. So as we come towards the season, uh, to the end of the season of Lent and towards Easter, let us say yes yes to truth and no to lies. God bless you all. Would you join me as we pray? <clears throat> For the church, its leaders, and we its people, as we journey through this holy season of Lent, we pray to the Lord. For all peoples who patiently carry the cross on a daily basis and bear witness to the truth of God's word, we pray to the Lord. Lord for those of you who have written and asking for prayers, for those suffering from cancer and other crippling diseases, for those who have died at night, for those living alone in seniors' homes, for those who give thanks to God for this televised Mass, for those who are stressed with difficulties, and for our donor from Vanier, Ontario, we pray to the Lord. Lord for catechumens who are preparing for baptism and reception into the church, we pray to the Lord. Lord Good and loving God, we thank you for the graces you have given us and continue to give us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine that we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, my sisters and my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Let us pray. Receive back, O Lord, these sacrificial offerings which you have given to be offered to the honor of your name and grant that they may become remedies for our healing through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Up the Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by wondrous power of the cross your judgment on this world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. 
And so with the angels and saints, we proclaim your glory as all together we sing. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Benedict our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, the bishops across Canada, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, and thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us the peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share with one another a sign of this peace and friendship. of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Would those of you at home join with me now in this prayer to the Holy Spirit? Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. O God, on the first Pentecost, you instructed the hearts of those who believed in you by the light of the Holy Spirit. Under the inspiration of the same Spirit, give us a taste for what is right and true and a continuing sense of His presence and power. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the mysteries we have received, O Lord, bring us heavenly medicine, that they may purge all evil from our hearts and strengthen us with eternal protection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has been celebrated. Go in peace. Thanks to an anonymous donor from Vanier, Ontario, whose generous contribution made the televising of today's Mass possible. If you're interested in making monthly donations using the pre-authorized checking method, well, just call our office at 1-888-383-6277 for details.